Hello, welcome to Rygenics. In this video, we will continue our discussion on polymorphism. In my last videos, we learned about inheritance-based polymorphism and interface-based polymorphism. If you have not watched that video, then I highly recommend you to watch that video first before watching this. The link is available in the description. In this video, we will learn about polymorphic behavior of two-string method. Let's do a quick recap defining polymorphism. Polymorphism means many shapes. That means a method can have the same signature but different implementation in different classes. In our video on inheritance-based polymorphism, we discuss how a base class can define and implement virtual methods and the derived class are able to override them. This helps the programmer by enabling derived classes to inject their own implementations and defining of the base virtual method. It means that in your application, you are able to call a method on base class object and cause its derived class methods to be executed. Basically, we override base class functionality to provide more specialized implementation. What is the one most important benefit that polymorphism provides? Polymorphism promotes extensibility by allowing new subclasses and methods to be added to a class hierarchy without having to modify existing programs. We have seen this elaboratively in my previous videos on polymorphism. In this video, as mentioned earlier, we will try to understand the polymorphic behavior of two-string implementation. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's create a console application. As you probably know, .NET has a class call object. Every class that we create ultimately inherits from this class. Since every class inherits from this class, the members defined in object class are available and reusable in the derived classes. Let's create an instance of object class itself. Let's go to this class definition. You see there are a lot of methods which are virtual. Look at the method to string, which is also virtual. It means these methods can be overridden in any class. Why do we make a method virtual? We can make it abstract method as well, right? If our intention is to only allow overriding. We make the method as virtual if we wish to have some default implementation as well. Because in abstract method we cannot have a default implementation. It means two string method has also a default implementation. Let's see what is the default implementation of two string method. To understand this, let's create one custom class as well. Employee. Let's instantiate this class as well. Now let's print the two string implementation of these classes. Now, why do we have two string for employee as well? Because as discussed, every class we create automatically inherits from object class. We do not need to define this inheritance relationship. .NET automatically inherits for us. Now, let's run this. What do we get? We get the class name itself. It means the default implementation of the two string method of the object class returns the fully qualified name of the given type. Now, let's create a couple of properties in employee class. Let's assume that this is a big application with multiple components. Just to simulate that, let's create one more class. Finance. Let's have a method called Calculate Salary. Let's say it takes employee object. Let's say we have logic for calculating salary for the given employee. Now let's call Calculate Salary from our client. Let's comment this for now. Let's assign few values to employee properties. Instantiate finance class. Let's call calculate salary. Put a breakpoint here and run the application. Press F11. Mouse over to employee object. Look at the description of the class. Internally, .NET is calling the two-string method. Now, does this help in any way? By looking at the variable name, you know that's an employee object. And when you mouse over, .NET tells the same. So this does not help in any way. It would have been really good if we could have displayed more specific information about the object. Maybe information like which employee is this. Especially, it would have helped while debugging. So can we display which employee I am debugging right now? Let's stop this. I hope you remember, 
toString is a virtual method in object class which is inherited by every class in .NET. Hence, we can always override and provide our own specialized implementation. So, employee class can write its own version of toString method. So, let's go ahead and override toString in employee class and see how does it helps. Write override space and you can see there is a toString method. We don't need this base implementation. We would like to implement our own implementation. Employee name, name. Now let's run this in debugging mode. Let's press F11. Let's mouse over employee. It says employee ID 45, employee name John. Now does it look much meaningful and helpful too? As we know at runtime which employee we are working on. More than that, in bigger application, every class is recommended to override toString method and log the appropriate message in logger. For instance, in our calculate salary method, we can log the employee information. That's it for today. If you would like to know more about polymorphism, then related videos are available in the description below. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If it did, then please hit subscribe button to see more such content. Thanks.